And the one in there came on that third day, and Jesus could not be held in that grave. On this third Sunday, the ninth month of the year 2013, Father, we cry unto you today. Every power that has caged our promotion, our health, our finances, our breakthroughs. Every power that is holding back what we should have had since the beginning of this year. Lord, we invoke that power in this place today that could not hold Jesus Christ in the tomb. Lord, because your word and your voice is heavy, send word of release to those things in our lives today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please be seated. I thank God today for my life. Every time I have the opportunity to come before the people of God, I cannot but thank God for what I was and for what I'm trying to become and for what I am now. It's only by his grace. Thank God for the, this ministry, founded by our father, Prophet Dr. S. Gabera. I could have found my salvation everywhere else, anywhere else, but thank God I found it here. Thank God for this church, where I had the opportunity to make my mistakes and to grow. Thank God for my family. Thank God for the dispensation that is going on right now in this place. Thank God for your lives, for my co-pastors, Papa. Bless you, sir. Uh, when I got this assignment about two weeks ago to stand before you and preach the word, uh, I was preparing something else, even up till Thursday. But as we left here on Friday, the Spirit ministered to me that what Pastor Day in this title last week should be taken a little further for the benefit of the children of God in this church. And it confirms something that I've always believed. I see all the men of God on this pulpit, I mean on this podium or pulpit, pulpit, yeah, pulpit, on the altar, yes. They are, they are meant for blessings for you in this place. God has put us in his kitchen to prepare different, different, we are all chefs from our papa who has been doing this for years. You know, you can call Baba any time, any, any minute, any, for, for any kind of sermon or teaching, even without looking at his notes. And those of us that are still burning up be, be behind him, God has called us differently. We have different things that he has given us. In that kitchen of God, he has given us different, different menu. If you look at that, movie, that uh, TV program, The Chew, you see that the, the, the chefs there, they come up with different, different menu and they prepare what they have. Men of God should have the opportunity to come and bless this church regularly and periodically. And I pray today, 
as the Spirit led me to complement what Pastor Odoi did started last week, I pray that it will sink in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. So I currently went to my archive and I got this out. Can you imagine if the power went out suddenly for a place like Nigeria you can imagine that but here it's not imaginable but in Nigeria you imagine the power went out suddenly and your child by your side in the same room starts to cry because he or she cannot see the immediate environment and from that thickness of the darkness that child hears don't worry I am here can you imagine in a building where a loved one works some kind of strategy is going on there and as you are wondering what is happening to your loved one over there you hear the phone ring and says daddy mommy honey i'm okay can you imagine a bill is due and in sunday mind is due on monday you don't know what to do and a friend that you spoke to during the week just called you like about 11 p.m. on Sunday. And he says, I forgot to call you earlier than now, but that, that money you talked about on Tuesday, I make sure it gets to you tomorrow morning. What a relief. In the passage we read on in this, um, Psalm 29, we hear that the voice of the Lord is majestic. It is strong. So strong that it breaks the cedar. The cedar of Lebanon. Everything that needs to hear the word of God in your life today. That word will go through every situation and that ear will be open to hear the word in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we lift you up. In the next few minutes, Lord, take absolute control of me. Use me. Lord, the word that will come from my mouth and the meditation that will go through the hearts of your people. Let them both be acceptable unto you. I have no word of my own. These are your words, Lord. May it gratify you. Lord, we ask, may it bless your people. At the end of it all, may we be blessed and may you be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Last week, the rabbi, the teacher himself said, go is eager to talk to his children. God loves communion. Even in the beginning, in the, in the garden, he had always loved fellowship. We hear that every evening at the cool of day, he would walk to Abraham where he was, and he would fellowship with them, with, with him and the wife, in the cool of the day. He likes company. He, he knows the importance of having somebody around you, somebody to communicate. He evoked the Trinity so he could do things together with them. So, he wants to talk to his children. He said, two way thing. And don't forget that God too has ears. As he speaks to us, as we hear his voice, he wants to hear ours too. But why would you bother wanting to hear the voice of God, as we were told last week? Why would you bother to read his word? Why would you bother to have the spirit, to be in the spirit and talk to another spirit? Why would you bother? Because there is a lot of advantages in hearing the voice of God. The voices out there are discouraging. The voices out there are not progressive. The voices out there are retarding. The voices out there, they lack. You take a problem to a human being and they sympathize with you by the word of mouth. But they take that same word and spread it to other people who have no business in your business. But with God, when you hear 
his voice. He gives you a lot of things. One. The voice of God gives orderliness. There is orderliness in the voice of God. What I mean by orderliness is the fact that, you see, look at this environment now. This is, there's order going on. Look at how those chairs are set. Congregation, choir, instrumentalists, ministers. It looks beautiful. But can you imagine, if we come in here and we find a pastor there, uh, the instrumentalist is at the door, the choir is sitting, somebody is sitting right here, another one is sitting there's chaos. At times, our life is like in a chaos. We don't know what we can do next. We don't know what has to be done at what time. We are confused. In Genesis chapter 1, we read this. Uh, verses 1 to 3. Somebody can give me this. Because when creation came, everything was muddled up. And there was darkness. But the voice of God spoke through. What did he say? He said, let there be light. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, sir. The earth was without form. No form. And void. And void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. Mm. God said, and there was, praise the Lord. God helping us in this church, and God has been helping us. We come here, everything is okay. But if we had the choice of taking some bills, I'd been in it before in Dallas, we had the choice of some bills, and the first thing I say, please take care of, is the light. Because when there is light, uh, nobody has to know that other things are not working. If we don't have phone, it's still alright. The computer is still alright. But if there is no light, it's wahala. So, God saw the fact that the first thing about things is light. Order. And he created it First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. And look at what God did on the sixth day. After he had created everything that man will ever need, then he brought man. That's orderliness. He did not wait to create man and man will be without light, will be without water, will be without food. Would, would, but he created all of those things before he brought man. I pray today, everything that is disorderly in your life, every confusion, the Lord will speak the word, the voice of orderliness into them in the mighty name of Jesus. His voice will dispel every darkness around you in the mighty name of Jesus. Orderliness. That's the first thing. As soon as God created him, as God created man, crime started to come upon the face of the earth. Pastors may not see what you are doing. Your wife may not see what you are doing. Your husband may not see what you are doing. Your friends may not see. But there is a blood that speaks on behalf of you or anybody else. The Bible declares when Cain had killed his brother, the Bible, the Bible says God asked Cain where is your brother? And Cain said, well, am I my brother's keeper? What, what do I have to do with that? And God said, well, you may think you are not your brother's keeper, but his blood speaks to me from the ground. But now today we have a blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. And that is the blood of Jesus Christ. He still speaks. And I pray today, in that place where you cannot defend yourself, in that conference room, in that judgment room, in places where people are calling your name anyhow, any, any, any way, the voice that speaks,
speaks better things than the blood of Abel would defend you in the mighty name of Jesus. So the second thing is conviction. There is conviction in the voice of God. It convicts us. His word itself is for us, is to rebuke us, to teach us, and to guide us. And that's what we find in Genesis chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. There is assurance in the voice of God. Genesis 5, 2 to 5. Abraham was worried. If we ever have a hair that would bear his from his own from his own blood. He was worried. I don't know what you are worried about today, whether it's something you can have or what you cannot have, what you need to know and you do not know. I want to assure you that God assures you that what he has spoken about you will come through. I told Abraham, that's not what I said. I said you will have your own blood. But because you are in a hurry, go ahead meanwhile. But my word will still come through. Every word of God that is still hanging over your life, the Lord will bring them to come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm. There is victory in the voice of God. Second Chronicle chapter 20 verse 15. There was a sudden time that the children of God had to deal with problems. We all deal with problems every day of our lives. Some battles we win, some we lose, and come back to it to win it again. And this time, God assured the children of Israel that they were going to win, and they won. Second Chronicles, chapter twenty, verse three, verses, verse fifteen. Yes, sir. Listen. Listen. Mm. And you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but it is God. Thank you. I want to tell you my people of Caesar Balatra, Brooklyn today. When you are going through what you are going through, look through, hear through the voice of God in all your situations. He is speaking to you powerfully, majestically, and assuredly. He said, you will defeat this army that is coming. If only we can find time to sit and listen to God, the word of God. Hey, we will hear that assurance of victory. And I pray that will be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. What are you going through today? Have you forgotten his word that says when you are passing through? Because many of us pass through. Some of us don't. God has done it so much that we don't, we don't have nothing to pass through. Some of us do. But those of us that are true, do, do pass through. We need to remember the fact that, hey, God said when you are passing through, he doesn't say you will not pass through. So when you are passing through, know that this is God's test for you. And as you go through, he said, I will not, I will not leave you, I will not forsake you. When you pass through the world, I will be with you. When you pass through fire, I will be with you. I will see you at the end of the, of the tunnel. Whatever you are going through today, I hear the voice of God of assurance. We give you that assurance and victory in the mighty name of Jesus. There is peace and calm in the voice of God. Problems might sometimes come into our lives. But when Jesus Christ was on the high seas, he declared himself by his voice and calmed that sea. Every, every turbulence in your life today will be calmed by the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And you find that in Matthew chapter 8, verses 23-27. I'm going to like go through this as fast as I can. Um... For ministers, my fellow ministers, I want us to understand the fact that we are, we, are not, we are not left out. We are not left out. In Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4, God tells us, said, I'm a servant of God. 
and God speaks to me. He wakes me up every morning as one that is being taught. And I pray today that God will wake us up early in the morning and teach us so we can teach his people in the mighty name of Jesus. He says he puts the word in my mouth that will comfort the, the broken hearted. Please let us read that passage. The tongue of the learned, the one who has been who has been taught, the one who has learned, that is the word, that is the tongue God says he has given us as servant. Yes, sir. Yes. A word in season to him who is weary. Hold on, sir. Um, um, uh, because we, we need to speak to ourselves. We, sometimes we, we can't speak to the church of God alone. And you say, how about pastors? I'm speaking to my, my fellow pastor, including my Baba, who already knows, and everyone today. That we have people who are weary. People who, who, who come to us and they need to hear not our word, but the word of God. And that is what God says, say, his voice. We should hear that voice that teaches us how to speak to these weary ones when they come to us in time and out of time. Yes, sir. He awakens me morning by morning. Uh, what does he do? May the Lord awaken our ears that we can hear that voice in the mighty name of Jesus. In the voice of God, there is accomplishment. I don't know what you are, what you have laid your hands upon right now, but He says in Psalm ninety verse seventeen, He says, "I will show you favor, and I will establish the work of your hand." That's His voice speaking to you. Whatever you are going through, and maybe it's like top, you know, not, not going right, but hold on to that. Hear the word of God in it. God says I should continue, that He will establish this work of my hand. Let us look at um, Matthew chapter 4. Uh, we can read it all, but let me summarize it. Peter, among all the twelve, he had the boldness. He could have walked on water until Christ spoke it to him. He said, Lord, bid me come. Lord, let me hear your voice to tell me to come and walk on this water. And God, Jesus said, come. When Peter had voice, come. Then he had the confidence. In everything that you do, ma, sir, try to ask God first. In Proverbs chapter 3, Verse 5 around there says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. When you do, He will direct your path because He will speak direction. See, the Lord ordains the steps of the righteous. I pray today where you are at a standstill and you don't know where to go. And you are waiting for that voice to tell you to come, to tell you to go, to tell you to stop, to tell you to move back a little bit. You will hear that voice in the mighty name of Jesus. There is healing. In Psalm 107 verse 20 he said, He sent his word and his word healed. Where you are seated today and as I am standing, I pray that Lord will speak healing into every kind of ailment that we might have in the mighty name of Jesus. I say every disease in our body will hear that voice and that we shall be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Every Lord will on fire off that is sick. I say the Lord will go to them wherever they may be now in the mighty name of Jesus. There is approval in the voice of God. There is approval. People look at you today, they disapprove you. They think you don't amount to something. Don't worry. Hear the voice of God. The one that is able to approve you. He looked at his son and he said, This is my beloved son, in whom I want place. God wants as God is eager to speak to you, he's also eager to make you a showcase. He wants you to do things and like you will be in a gathering, like in a concert, and you look at your son or daughter on the stage and say, Yeah, 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 that's my son. That's what God wants to do with us. And every year that our lives is, is, 
is less than what God can be proud of today. I say the voice of God will teach us what to do to make things right in the mighty name of Jesus. God's healing is uh, approval is in um, Luke chapter 3 verse 21. There is restoration in the voice of God. There is restoration. Have you lost things? Finances, property, knowledge. What have you lost? God is able to restore you even more than you had before. Because He will speak the word. And let us see what He spoke here in John 11. The man was dead. Pada, pada. Let's say it. Um, okay. Restoration of John. Um, John 11, 43 to 44. Do we have it there, uh, my reader? John 11. Mm. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine a man that was sick? They sent to Jesus for this. He still did not come. And the man died. And now, Jesus started to come majestically to the place. And he spoke. Lazarus, come forth. Death had that voice. And Lazarus came out. What, what, what situation are you in today? You're dealing with headache or stomach ache. You are not dead yet to the glory of God. This power that I'm talking about, this voice of God that I'm talking about, the one that can break the cedar of Lebanon, can speak and command sickness and death in your life to give up and that will be so in the mighty name of Jesus and so Lazarus was restored there is salvation in the voice of God he spoke to Sarkios he said today salvation has come to your house Sarkios was not a desirable uh, member of the society but with Christ in his life, things turn around for him. I say things will turn around for you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Have you heard the voice of salvation yet? Faith cometh by hearing. You have to hear it to be saved. Have you given your life to Christ? Have you, have you, I'm not saying listening now. There's a difference between listening and hearing. You are all listening to me now. But not many of you are hearing me. Not all of you are hearing me. Because you are hearing voice coming out. Or you are, I mean, you, you are listening attentively. I said, look at me, but not everyone is hearing what I'm saying. Have you been with somebody and you talk, talk, and say, eh? Are you not listening? I'm not listening. What did I say? What was the last thing I said? So listening is different from hearing. You are listening to God's voice. You hear God's voice. You hear it on the radio. You hear it from the pastors. You, even when you read the Bible, the voice comes to you. I see you say, talon sorrow. But are you hearing? Revelation 3.20 Revelation 3.20 Yes, sir. The most important thing about hearing God is to make use of what we've listened to and what we hear. What is the use of hearing? 
said we should not be here only, but we should be doers. We hear a lot of sermons, we hear a lot of, we read a lot of things. But how much difference has it made in our lives? How much have we used it? So he says there, I am at the door, I am knocking. If you will open the door of your heart, I will come. And I pray today. As you hear the voice of God, you will not be only hearers alone. As you listen to his voice, you will hear him. And you will not be only hearers alone, but you will be doers in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us stand. Move Satan. I don't know if that is where you have your radio or your TV tuned to now. That is what you are listening to. I don't know. Maybe that is the tape you hear in your car. I don't know what voice is speaking to you. Because, ma, sir, let me give you this analogy about the ear and the mouth. You see, what you listen to, this ear, is like spiritual mouth. And I'm explaining it in a minute. Your ear is like your mouth, spiritually. Your heart is like your stomach, spiritually. Your mouth is like your behind, spiritually. You see, from the abundance of the heart, Oh, the mouth speaks. So you hear stomach? Huh? When it is full, when you hear two years, you say, I'm not going to tell anybody. Wait until another year when you have had and had and had and your heart is full. You spill it out. So you must be careful what you hear. And be careful what you listen to. Because it is what you listen to that you will hear. And it is what you hear that will stay in your, in your heart. And what, what is in your heart that you will speak. And don't forget, it says, as a man thinketh, so he is. And now with the, look, no, this, the, the, the real one, is that you eat with your mouth. It stays in your stomach. You must be careful what you listen to. Because what you listen to is what you will hear. And what you hear is what you have in your heart. And what you have in your heart is what you will speak out. Lord, every negative thing that is, that is bothering my ear, I don't want to hear them, but they are, they are coming. Lord, blot them out today. Replace my VOS station with the VOG, voice of God. Let me hear from you, Lord. We have had it before. And we say, you want to speak to us as, our, as your children. You are eager to speak to us. Lord, let us hear as you speak. And look, I will, I will, let me end with this. I said something on Friday. God is good. He's long suffering. Let me know. Ah, open. Well, it's not forever. Zechariah 7.13, please. 
God is speaking to you, if you do not hear him, he's giving you direction, he's giving you correction, and you are not listening, now, one day it will stop. It will be your mama kwami. You saw it, sir? God is telling you, you are hearing his voice, he's speaking to you, you are hearing it, and you are not doing it. He says, when I called, they did not answer. So when they call me, Ketuba, I will not answer. May the Lord hear us in the mighty name of Jesus. Every adamant spirit that is not making us to hear instruction, to hear the voice of God, to walk with it, and is holding back our blessings. Today, Lord, we do them in our hearts. Pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus.